Hello guys, we broke the world record on fastest GPT-1 pre-training, just 2 hours, 42 minutes, 49 seconds on a single 4090 GPU. Everything you contribute here can go directly onto your resume when you are applying to OpenAI, DeepMind, Anthropic, etc. Because this is exactly what they do. We merged so many new pull requests and here are so many new improvements we're done for LLM pre-training and it's all open source and I'm gonna explain this all. Also, the readme file is even shorter now, it's even, sim even simpler to understand. We're gonna be going for GPT-3 very soon. GPT-2 is completely trainable by what we have right now and I have a lot better setup guide for you to follow, it's a lot more clear. We first train on just 8 million tokens to test the changes quickly, then 20 million, then 100 million and then 1 billion. This takes like a few, uh, a few hours, yeah, and this takes around 16 minutes which was actually 20 and a half minutes yesterday and today is just 16 minutes we've brought it down so much and everything is fully open source you can follow our changes so uh, first we searched for way better hyperparameters look how clean our hyperparameters are they are all uh, squares of two except number of layers uh, just so we can max out memory and we try to keep this number as nice as possible as well. And we also did Muon and Adam W learning rate search. So uh, this is our baseline. So before this, the training was way over two minutes. It was way worse. So this is where we start from. And I'm talking about 8 million tokens. This is actually baseline for every single one of them. So four minutes, 20 minutes, and it's also, but here it's not the baseline. Here we have all of these other changes as well as the baseline because it would have uh, taken so long without these other changes uh, to measure baseline for 1 billion. Then we used squared ReLU instead of SWIGLU as the feed forward. This increased uh, speed of training a lot while keeping perform, uh, I mean, training loss and valuation loss same for 8 million tokens. You see how it, how much it went by uh, 15 seconds here. Here it's almost half a minute, big difference. This is because now we have one less linear layer in feed forward and squared ReLU works good enough for small models. For bigger models, I imagine we're gonna go back to SwiGlu. Later, I will go through this setup and speedrun guide and show you step-by-step step how you can set this up and uh, create pull requests and contribute. And by the way, you can put this on your resume for OpenAI, for Anthropic, they do exact same things like we do here. You can join my school to become AI researcher, seven days free trial and then just $9 per month. We got courses and community and live calls, link below the video, everything we make here goes back to the AI research directly that we do. Then we added Polar Muon, which is just another faster algorithm for Muon Optimizer. And lastly, we casted the entire model to BF16. Uh, this is good for small models. Now, if we go for long runs, uh, maybe uh, optimizers would require higher precision, but it seems like this worked quite well. We saved nine minutes here. So maybe this is still not long enough a run that requires higher precision. I just did another experiment. So remember, the current baseline is 2 hours, 42 minutes, 49 seconds. And this new experiment did the same in 2 hours, 41 minutes. So this is just about a one and a half minute improvement, which is not enough, which is too small, because uh, if I wanted to add this new code, just saving one minute, but adding so much code, a bunch of code, it's not worth it because it's gonna make everything more complex. When we're adding new features, we're gonna think about more code, there will be more conflicts, more bugs, more things to think about. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this pull request uh, without merging it because it's not good enough. It doesn't, you see, uh, it's gonna add a bunch of code right here. It's adding a bunch of code, but it doesn't have a big enough impact to add so much code because for all of the new code, there is complexity interest. So the interest rate you pay by your uh, code base being more complex and slowing you down. There is just one more pull request. It was around seven today. I think two or three are merged, uh, about four are not merged. And I made a new guide to make sure that when you submit a pull request, it gets merged. 
So I made a guide on how you can measure your improvement and then submit a pull request just after you measure an improvement. First of all, you need to select a GPU to train on. So you can use one of the free GPUs or rent one of the paid GPUs. If you use Novita AI, they're gonna actually give us more free compute because now they're giving us free compute to do the research. So thank you Novita for the free compute. They have the cheapest H100s that I know of. However, you also have these other providers so you can choose one you like. If you wanna help us out, use my affiliate link below. They're gonna give us free compute to do more research. But there are free options here as well. And you may also watch this AI research setup guide if you want, it's my tutorial. However, uh, next you're gonna go uh, git clone and you're gonna install requirements and download this dataset of 40 million tokens. It's already uh, pre-processed and everything. So for the first two benchmarks, 8 million and 20 million, you can use this data set. If you're gonna use 100 million and 1 billion, then you download the full data set of 1 billion tokens. So the first two benchmarks, this data set, second two benchmarks, this data set. Then you must measure the baseline first, our code without any of your changes. So just measure the what you uh, forked from the main branch because your hardware will be different. So, and you will also, in this case, need to run this code two times uh, because first time it will compile and warm up kernels. And then the second time will be your actual time you need to beat. So it says here, just uh, look at this training time. And from the second time you run this Python train LLMPy, you need to run it two times in uh, consecutively. And the second time you run it, you're gonna just look at these values described here and that's what you need to beat with your code. Then make changes, but make sure when you make changes, just change one thing. Don't change multiple things. You need to measure things one by one in scientific research to know what improves the model and how much. Usually because you just uh, ran your script before, now you already have your uh, graphs from PyTorch and warmed up kernels. It could happen that your code breaks the kernels. Uh, then you would need to make sure to run it two times again. The first time will be slow and that's not the real uh, measuring time that we measure. We measure after the kernels are compiled. So the second time. You're gonna have to get some feeling for this. When you get the feeling that kernels are already warmed up or when the a graph is broken so you need to warm them up again. But research is a long process. Don't expect to just prompt uh, Cloud Opus 4.5 and then it's gonna discover something and you're gonna submit it. Usually it's just a very long process and it requires thinking. And it's not um, a quick thing overnight. Once you make sure training time is uh, lower than our baseline that you measured and uh, final validation loss is not like too uh, much worse or not worse at all, then you can submit within a pull request and uh, paste, copy paste your baseline uh, statistics, your improved statistics and explain concisely, no AI generated explanations. It's low effort. Rewrite AI generated explanations yourself to show that you care and to actually make them higher quality because AI generated explanations are bad. You may go here to discussions of our GitHub repository and check out these discussions and there are some ideas you can get here. We already have an interesting idea, uh, trying out different optimizers for our data. It looks like some of them are better, achieve a lower loss. We could even create our own optimizer. And this is the first step because now this is trained on 8 million tokens. We would need to actually train this on maybe uh, 100 million or 50 million, big uh, chunk of the whole data set to make sure that it's not accidentally fitting those 8 million. But this is a very good contribution. This is how one uh, person starts something and then another person uh, builds on top of that, etc. That's how we do open science. And I was also thinking about some automated AI research, just like in Alpha Evolve. And this paper, although I don't, I didn't read this, I think. So this is about writing software. So I'm guessing it could work for us and it's uh, released not so long ago. Because right now in my setup, I'm mostly talking to the AI, telling it what to do and it can uh, run the code. It's connected to Novita AI 1490 GPU. 
and it can just execute and do everything itself. So maybe we can just automate the entire process or recombining previous successful ideas. Maybe we can do something like this, but we need to have a clear goal. So right now, uh, when I'm getting pull requests from you, I want you to measure your improvements of uh, lowering the pre-training speed of the LLM and that's the criteria. Otherwise, everybody will be doing random things and we will get nowhere. So if we do a public project, we need to have some goal and way to measure it or it will get nowhere just like our last project got nowhere because everybody was just adding code and it was like there, there was everything, but we didn't achieve anything with it. And this is quite a good uh, idea because we have loss or training time and this system can easily just measure how well it's performing based on that loss and training time. I'm actually wondering if we will also start creating like a video generation, image generation. I think we will, but maybe first focusing on LLMs and creating this uh, open uh, source AI lab structure and contribution structure. That's our main challenge. I think our main challenge is not even the LLM. It's like creating this structure of completely open source AI lab and how it works. GLM 4.7 just got out. It's quite cheap. Maybe you, we can use that to generate a bunch of code compared to let's say Opus or Cloud Sonnet. This can just run for so much. Although Gemini 3 Flash, uh, this is also cheap. It's very good. It might be better than GLM 4.7. I'm not sure. Although it's two times more expensive as well. Here on Novita, they're giving uh, this Cat Coder Pro V1 for free right now. Maybe we can utilize these free models on Novita Open Router and maybe other places. We'll see. And just let it, let it automatically do research. By the way, guys, Grok 4 is falling behind and they said Grok 5 would come at the end of the year, which is right now. So maybe we're going to get Grok 5 soon. But Mimo V2 Flash is actually ranked quite high. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Join my school and contribute to our open research and see you next time.